Hello friends, welcome back to our channel, Meet Biology Expert. I am Dr. Parvi. In today's session, we are going to discuss another question paper that is 2018 Meet question paper. So from this question paper, how many questions came from class 12 biology, the first unit, reproduction. So let's discuss all these questions with their answers in detail. Right. So the first question is, which of the following has proved helpful in preserving pollen as fossils? Okay. Which of the following has proved helpful in preserving pollen as fossils? The options are pollen kit, cellulosic in time, oil content or sporopollenin. So these are the options. This question came from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants, the second chapter. And particularly if you see in page number 23 in the NCRT book, here is the paragraph. Let us zoom this paragraph and see. Okay. So here you could see here. The pollen grains are well preserved as fossils because of the presence of sporopollenin. So here is the answer, sporopollenin. So let us understand this. Suppose if this is a pollen grain, the pollen grain has two covering. The internal covering, the internal covering is called as in time. Okay, internal covering is called as in time. And the very tough external covering is called as exine. Okay, the hard outer covering of the pollen grain is called exon. This exon is made up of sporopollenin. Okay, so sporopollenin is the toughest part which gives the toughest toughness to the exon layer. So, let us again read this question. Which of the following has proved helpful in preserving pollen as fossils? So, it is sporopollenin. So, let us see why not the other options. Pollen kit. Pollen kit is the external uh, a thin layer of the pollen grain which give color and some oily substances to this pollen grain okay stickiness to the pollen grain so this is not the answer and in time is the inner layer and oil content is also present in the outer layer so the answer is sporopollenin now the second question is which of the following flowers only once in its lifetime so here they are asking which plant flowers only once in its lifetime? Okay. So the options are bamboo species, jackfruit, mango or papaya. So this question was taken from chapter 1, reproduction in organisms. So in the NCRT book, if you go to the page number 9, here you could find a paragraph which talks about this. So let us zoom this and look at the sentences. So see here, a few plants exhibit unusual flowering phenomena. Some of them such as bamboo species, they flower only once in their lifetime, generally after 50 to 100 years. Produce large number of fruits and then die. Okay. So here it is given one example as bamboo. Okay. Bamboo flowers only once in its lifetime. So the answer is which of the following flowers only once in its lifetime? It is bamboo species. The third question is, the contraceptive Saheli, okay, and remaining is left out. So, what are the options? Blocks estrogen receptors in the uterus, preventing eggs from getting implanted. That means it is a mode of action, okay. So, whether this is blocking the estrogen receptors in the uterus and prevents egg from getting implanted, this is one option. And another option is the Saheli increases the concentration of estrogen and prevents ovulation in the females, okay, whether it will work by this mechanism. Or whether Saheli is an intrauterine device or whether it is a post-coital contraceptive. So, these are the options. Okay. So, this question has been taken from the chapter 4, Reproductive Health. So, in this chapter, if you see under page number 58, the last line, the last line of this last paragraph talks about Saheli. So, there is no much information given in this NCRT book. Okay. It is just told that Saheli is a Oral contraceptive for the females which was developed by CDRI, India, Lucknow. Okay. So, let me explain you what is Saheli is. Saheli is a non-steroidal, non-hormonal oral contraceptive pill. Okay. This is important. See, generally we have other contraceptive pills. Those pills will be hormonal or they are steroidal. They affect the hormone production in synthesis or they control the hormonal levels. Okay. Or they may be steroid drugs. So, here particularly this Saheli is a non-steroidal, non-hormonal contraceptive pill produced for the first time in the world, okay, 
by CDRI Central Drug Research Institute Scientist in Lucknow, India. That is an important point. So what this uh, contraceptive pill exactly contains? It contains a drug called Centchroman. Centchroman. This is the important key component. So how it works? What, what it does means it go and blocks the estrogen receptors in the uterus. Okay. Before that, let us understand how other contraceptive drugs will work. Okay. So for example, other contraceptive other contraceptive pills okay so how they works so when it is taken orally what will happen it will go and increase the estrogen level increase the estrogen level so this high estrogen prevents it prevents ovulation in the female prevents ovulation so if no ovulation occurs the graphene follicle won't rupture the secondary oocyte so here the ovum or the egg will not be produced so as a result of that pregnancy will not occur so this is the mode of action of the other contraceptive pills they increase the estrogen level and prevents the ovulation whereas this saheli contains a peculiar compound called scent chromin okay so this will allow all the ovulation so for the women who takes the saheli contraceptive usual um, level of estrogen will be there her hormonal cycle will be normal and she will ovulate and the ovum will be released out so when the sperm is there during sexual intercourse even fertilization anchor and zygote will be formed okay now what happens now this zygote is formed it has to come and implant in the uterus right implantation in the uterus should be there for the zygote to develop into embryo so what Saheli does it go and block the estrogen receptors in the uterus it go and blocks the estrogen receptors so when the estrogen receptors are not there in the uterus the zygote could not able to come and implant successfully okay so if there is no successful implantation pregnancy will not occur so this is the root of or mode of action of the saheli drug okay so let us again see the question the contraceptive saheli okay how it works it blocks the estrogen receptors in the uterus and prevents the eggs from getting implanted so this is the correct answer okay so the second option if you see it increases the concentration of estrogen and prevents ovulation in a female no these are the work of the other contraceptive pills okay saheli is peculiar they work by this route okay so the first one is the answer let us move on to the fourth question double fertilization is dash or what what's double fertilization okay the options are fusion of two male gametes of a pollen tube with two different eggs so what is the meaning for this in a mature embryo sac how many eggs will be present only one egg will be present the pollen tube is bringing two male gametes okay so in the first option they are telling fusion of two male gametes of a pollen tube with two different eggs so we know that in an embryo sac only one egg will be there so this is not the answer and the second option is fusion of one male gamete with two polar nuclei so it looks like half correct okay so one the male gamete is coming and they fuse with the two polar nuclei so this is like looking half correct okay and third option if you see fusion of two male gametes with one egg cell so again here one egg cell could uh, fuse with only one gamete so here it is written two male gametes so this could not be the answer and here the fourth one if you see syngamy and triple fusion so first we must understand what is syngamy and triple fusion to confirm this as the answer right okay this question has been taken from the chapter sexual reproduction in the flowering plants and in the page number 34 here under the double fertilization okay here is the paragraph which speaks about this let us zoom this and see See here, syngamy and triple fusion takes place in the embryo sac and this phenomenon is called double fertilization. Okay, so let us see. The male gamete, two male gametes are coming in the pollen tube. Okay, so one male gamete which is haploid, one male gamete, one male gamete, it fuses with the egg cell which is haploid and it becomes the zygote which is 2N. This process is called as syngamy, right? Okay. And another male gamete, another male gamete which is coming, it fuses with the two polar nuclei in the central cell. So, the two polar nuclei is 2N. Okay. So, two polar nuclei 
and it forms 3N nuclei that we call primary endosperm nucleus or PEN. And this process is called as a triple fusion. So ultimately, syngamy and triple fusion are together called as double fertilization. So the answer is D, syngamy and triple fusion. Let us see the fifth question. Pollen grains can be stored for several years in liquid nitrogen having a temperature of dash. Okay. Pollen grains are stored in the liquid nitrogen at which temperature? Minus 120, minus 80, minus 196 or minus 160. So this question is again from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So here in the page number 24 we could see a paragraph which talks about this. So let us zoom this and see. Look here. It is possible to store pollen grains of large number of species for years in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degree. It is written minus 196 degree centigrade in brackets. So what do you understand from this? Even the small information given in the brackets also is important. We have to study each and every line carefully. Okay. So the answer is minus 196 degree. Let us move on to the question number 6. Which of the following plants shows a very close relationship with a species of moth where none of the two can complete its life cycle without the other? Okay. So here they are asking moth is there. And the moth is having a symbiotic relationship with which of these following plants. Okay. So the options are hydrilla, yucca, banana and viola. So this question is from the chapter 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So if you see page number 30, the last paragraph of this page talks about this. Okay. So let us zoom this and see. Look here. A relationship between a species of moth and a plant yucca is there where both species that is moth and the plant cannot complete their life cycles without each other. So exactly the words were taken from the NCRT book. So which plant it is the yucca plant. Okay. So what is this exactly? Yucca plant is there. It provides a shelter to the moth. So the moth insects comes and lays their eggs. Okay. So when the X comes out, okay, the N ones comes out and they fly off. That time they help the plant for the pollination. So the plant needs the moth for the pollination and the moth needs the plant for its shelter. Okay, so this is the symbiotic relationship between echo plant and the moth. So the answer is number two, echo. The next question, question number seven. The amnion and mammalian embryo is derived from. That means the amnion, the covering, okay, and the mammalian embryo is derived from which of these following tissue layers? Ectoderm and mesoderm, endoderm and mesoderm, mesoderm and trophoblast, ectoderm and endoderm. So this question is taken from chapter 3, human reproduction. So in this chapter, exactly the same lines will not be there in the NCRT book. So this is like when you understand the concepts, you could be able to an uh, answer this question. Okay, so what is this exactly talking about? These are about the extra embryonic membranes. Okay, we know that chorion, amnion, allantois, yolk sac are the extra embryonic membranes. So after fertilization and uh, the zygote embryo is formed, okay, the embryo is formed, the embryo comes and gets implanted after successful implantation. Uh, three layers will be generated ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. So from those three layers, different extra embryonic membranes and other organelles will be developed. Okay. So now this question is about that. From which tissue layer, which extra embryonic membrane develops? Particularly amnion and the embryo is coming from which uh, layers? Okay. So if you see in this picture, the center part is the embryo. Right. Center part is the embryo. This embryo is covered by a first layer of uh, uh, outer covering, this, this blue color. This is called amnion. Okay. So, in between the amnion and the embryo is a space which is called amniotic space which contains amniotic fluid. So, external to the amnion is the chorion. Now, the question is from where this amnion and embryo is generated? So, the answer is the amnion is formed from that means inside the inner part is made from ectoderm and outer is made up of mesoderm. This we call as a somatopluric. Somatopluric means 
the inner is from ectoderm and outer is from mesoderm so both the amnion and embryo are somatopleuric so if we look back the question again the amnion and mammalian embryo is derived from ectoderm and mesoderm okay so ectoderm and mesoderm is the answer inner ectoderm outer is mesoderm okay so here endoderm is given endoderm is not there trophoblast cells are not there here endoderm is then not there okay so two three four are not the answers ectoderm and mesoderm right so let us move on to the last eighth question the difference between spermiogenesis and spermiation is so what is the difference between the term or the terminology spermiogenesis and spermiation okay so to understand this first we must know what is spermiogenesis and spermiation so first let us see the options so in spermiogenesis spermatids are formed while in spermiation spermatozoa are formed see in the gametogenesis okay spermatogenesis particularly we know that the stages of formation are spermatids or the immature sperms and they get matured into matured spermatozoa and they get released out these are the processes okay so here they are telling spermiogenesis in spermiogenesis spermatids are formed in spermiation spermatozoa are formed okay this is one option second option is in spermiogenesis spermatozoa are formed while in spermiation spermatids are formed it is just the opposite opposite of these options okay this is the second option third in spermiogenesis spermatozoa from cetony cells are released into the cavity of the seminiferous tubules while in spermiation spermatozoa are formed okay here they are talking some more detail about release of the uh, sperms from the septoli cells and fourth one in spermiogenesis spermatozoa are formed while in spermiation spermatozoa are released from the septoli cells into the cavity of the seminiferous tubules see this looks very much uh, confusing right spermiation spermatozoa spermogenesis spermatids like this okay so to understand this better first we must know the definition for the word what is spermiogenesis and spermiation so this question is from the chapter human reproduction page number 47 this paragraph okay gametogenesis this talks about this so let us see this first what is spermiogenesis spermiogenesis genesis means what genesis means formation right formation so what is forming sperms are forming sperms are forming so this process is called spermiogenesis okay so look at the definition the spermatids are transferred into spermatozoa that is sperms by the process called spermiogenesis already spermatids that means the immature sperm cells are formed they are now getting matured okay into uh, complete sperms so that process is called spermiogenesis okay remember this second one spermiation spermiation is what after spermiogenesis sperm head becomes embedded in the septoli cells and finally released from the seminiferous tubules by the process of the spermiation okay so look at this picture here so see here these are the spermatids immature sperm cells okay they are getting matured matured into spermatozoa that means they get the tail part so once they get the tail part also they are getting embedded in the septoli cells to absorb the nutrition and get its uh, nourishment okay so spermatid to spermatozoa maturation is called spermiogenesis and release of the mature spermatozoa through the seminiferous tubules is called as spermiation okay so let us look back the question again so the difference between spermiogenesis and spermiation is okay so here the option is 4 in spermiogenesis spermatozoa are formed when while in spermiation spermatozoa are released from the septoli cells into the cavity of the seminiferous tubules so if you see in 2008 neat question paper okay from the class 12 first unit reproduction four questions came from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants and two questions came from the chapter reproductive health and one question came from the chapter reproduction in organisms and human reproduction each so totally eight questions came from this first unit during the 2018 neat exams okay so i hope this session is useful for you so if you like this like comment share and subscribe to our channel neat biology expert thank you